Dear friends and colleagues of the Diocese of New Westminster, I want to take this opportunity to connect with as many people in the diocese as possible as we approach March the 1st, 2019, the fifth anniversary of my consecration and installation as your bishop. A video message seems to me to be the best vehicle for what I'd like to say, and what I'd like to say is this. Thank you. I love being your bishop. For me, this has been the most transforming experience in my ministry. I'm humbled by your affection, your support, and your confidence in our ability to work together as we live our vision, growing communities of faith in Jesus Christ to serve God's mission in the world. It seems it was only a short time ago that many of us gathered in Vancouver on a damp Saturday, St. David's Day in 2014, to begin this chapter in our history together. It was a day that saw the presence of the Holy Spirit in many, many different manifestations. The territorial acknowledgement and welcome prior to the Eucharist at the Vancouver Convention Center by indigenous leader Deborah Sparrow of the Musqueam First Nation. The Nishka dancers leading the procession from the Convention Center on Burrard Street to Christ Church Cathedral. The glorious music of the diocesan choristers and musicians the beauty and pageantry of the processions and those gorgeous banners by Thomas Roach, the thousands of daffodils beautifully arranged by Belinda Kishimoto and her team, the presence of more than a dozen bishops, including our primate, the Most Reverend Fred Hiltz, Archbishop John Privet, and Bishop Greg Rickle of the Diocese of Olympia, who offered that amazing homily and assisted me in vesting following my ordination. And then of course the Eucharist, the focal point of our spiritual lives together. Arriving at Christ Church Cathedral, following the procession up Burrard Street and knocking on the door and being welcomed into the narthex by Dean Peter Elliott, hearing the words read by Chancellor George Cadman confirming the fact that I was to be installed receiving the diocesan crozier from the bishop of this diocese, Michael Ingham, and then after the liturgy, spending time with many of you, expressing your good wishes. These are memories that will remain with me for the rest of my life. And as wonderful as our beginning was, and it was wonderful, it's our present that delights me more and more every day as we continue to focus on our diocesan priorities together. So I want to review those priorities. First priority, our grounding in a relational God who enables us to foster relationships with one another in all we do in diocesan parish and community circles. Second, focusing our diocesan energy and resources on parish development in that we believe that it's through local Anglican congregations, big and small, that Christ is present to us and to the world in a unique and valuable way. Our third priority, in that our God is a justice-seeking God, committing ourselves to deepen relationships with and to pursue justice for Canada's Inuit, First Nations, and Métis peoples, especially in advancing the calls to action of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Fourth, focusing on increasing the diversity of the leadership in our diocese and strengthening the ability of our parishes to engage the diversity of the people already in our parishes, in our neighborhoods, and in our region. And finally, the fifth priority, committing ourselves to the stewardship of our lives and our communities working on the overall sustainability of our diocese in the areas of finance, property, relationships to those in our neighborhoods, developing leaders, and developing our parish and diocesan cultures, and in those cultures seeking to be more transparent, more collaborative, more consultative, and more courageous in all the decisions we make. All of these priorities are ministry in progress. With God's help, the combined effort that we make 
to maintain the focus on these priorities will have a lasting effect long after I cease to be your bishop. So we still have two years together, and I want to reassure you that during that time I will remain energized, committed, and hopeful as we continue to move forward in our ministry together. I love you all and continue to feel honored to serve as your bishop.